So we're trying to move from a fixture list that contains fixtures and results through an analysis all the way to presenting a league table. And we're well on the way now. We've um, presented this collated analysis that's based on uh, some basic analysis on the data sheet. Uh, and this collated analysis, you know, we're all, already well on the way to having this league table, but we're going to have to clearly do some things to get the teams in the right order and also to produce important measures like points, things like that. And in this video, we're going to look at uh, producing, creating that points measure and also at counting up the number of goals scored by each team. So maybe now you can start thinking what formula might help us to do that, count up all of the goals scored by each team. But first, let's have a look at the points. And now there's three points for a win. So you might think, well, that's fairly straightforward. I can just put the three in the formula, but then you'll be breaking, you know, a good principle of spreadsheet development, which is to not put numbers or parameters in formulae because theoretically the number of points per win could change in the Premier League and that would mean your model would be difficult to update because you'd have to change all of those formulae. So generally it's good practice to separate parameters and you can do that uh, here. Let's just say points per game and then let's put a three in this cell and then we're going to reference that cell in the formulae and that means if the number of points awarded per game were to change we'll be able to just change the value in the, in the cell change the value in the cell, we can do that very quickly, much easier than messing about with formally trying to change values and stuff. So that's the principle of separating parameters. It's a good one to bear in mind. So let's look at the points column. Uh, what formula might help us here? Well, you get three points for a win and one point uh, for a draw. So let's say the number of home wins multiplied by the value in the cell we've created um, points per game. Remember we're going to need an absolute reference there. So it's going to be the number of home wins um, multiplied by the points per home win uh, plus the number of away wins multiplied by the points per uh, away win. And again an absolute reference there. Okay and then one point for a draw too. In fact before I go any further I'm going to say change this to points per points per win. Just here, and then let's have. In fact, let's just move this up to the top, and then let's have points per draw. So that's another parameter that could theoretically change. Let's just put a one in there. So our formula is processing the points per win fine, but we need to incorporate the draws in there too. So the home draws first just here, multiplied by the points per draw, absolute reference, close bracket, plus the away draws, open the bracket again, plus the away draws, multiplied by points per draw in an absolute reference. That's just outside of your screenshot, but you'll be able to double click on the formula. Remember, you can download the file from the website. The link is below this video. Work along uh, with me. So something like that should do the job. So it's saying Arsenal got 71 points uh, across the whole season. This is quite an easy model to validate. We can just access uh, the Premier League uh, table just here. So Arsenal, 71 points. That's just outside of your screenshot. It's not easy for me to show you, but they did get 71 points in the season. That seems to be working well. Can we just copy paste this down and just check in the reference again? Yeah, it looks fine. Copy and paste that down. Leicester, 81 points. Checking that online. Yep. Leicester did get 81 points. Let's check Aston Villa. Bottom of the table. Relegated Aston Villa, 17 points. Yeah. So this uh, seems to be working well. Yeah. And the point to bear in mind is we've separated out the parameters. Uh, it's not generally not a good idea to be typing numbers into formulae. Better to separate the parameters and reference a cell. Then you can just change the value in the cell. Okay. So we've got the points there. Seems to be working well. Uh, now we're going to move on to something a little bit more complicated, which is uh, the total goals for and the total uh, goals against for each team. That's going to allow us to calculate the goal difference. Uh, so let's go back to our original data. Let's try to understand the structure 
of the data and again try to say out loud logically and clearly what we're trying to do with the formula that's going to help us translate it into Excel language. Well we want Excel to go through the home team column to go through column A and where the team that we're interested in um, is equal to the team that appears in column A we want it to count up the, ho the home goals there and to go through the whole, the whole column if it's the team we need to keep counting up those home goals. So that's what we're looking for it to do. What formula might help us to do that? Do you have any ideas? You might want to stop the video, try to put the formula in yourself. Well, a good formula here would be the sum if formula. So the sum if formula is going to sum things up if they meet a certain condition. And our condition is if the team in the cell equals the team that is on this row. And remember, this row is Arsenal's row. Uh, so if that's the case, then uh, sum up the goals and then give me a figure at the end. So it's asking for three criteria. There we go, you can see it on your screenshot now. And we're going to use all three. So the range is um, the range uh, we want to look at. And this range contains the data that we're going to use to choose which data to count if that makes sense. So this is an important uh, element of the formula. If that doesn't make sense, keep working through the process. It should uh, make sense as we go along. Okay, and I'm going to fix um, the references here. I think if I fix the column ref uh, the row references rather, that should do the job. So our criteria, remember our criteria is going to be the team name. And again, let's just fix the uh, references there. And then the sum range, so Excel is saying, where is the data that you want me to sum up? Now, clearly we can't sum up team names, so it's got to be somewhere else. Here we're looking at home goals four. So what reference would be good on the data table? Home goals four. So here we've got home goals. So I think um, column E is going to be the best reference here. Uh, and then I'm just going to fix these using, just outside of your screenshot, fixing these uh, to just fixing the row reference. Okay, so that's just outside your screenshot, but definitely um, review the formula, uh, try to understand it. Okay, so as it sounds, we've got nothing, so I'm sure Arsenal would have scored a goal uh, at home. So let's try to understand uh, what's going on here. Okay, we've got the, the data range is A. So is that right? to the top. Data range appears to be right. And then the second is the criteria. Yep, yeah, the team name, that appears to be right. And then the sum range is E2 to E381. Data, yes, that appears to be right. E2, okay, so we haven't clearly haven't got the right column for summing things up there. Um, just going to get this into your screenshot. There we go. Yeah, so this E reference clearly isn't right. Um, this should refer to, let's just look at the data sheet. Yeah, the home goals are in column C, not column E. So I'm just going to edit this formula, change this reference to C. Got the partial absolute reference in there. Seems to be doing the job. Okay, so it's telling us that Arsenal scored 31 goals at home. You know, that seems sensible. We'll give it a full test against the league table uh, later. And I'm just going to pull this formula down. Okay, so this, this is a good example of me not getting the references quite right. So it's re returned the same number uh, for each formula there. So let's double click on the formula, see what's going on. We can see that the formula is still re referring to the first team. That's because haven't quite got the references right here. This reference that refers to the team name should be a partial absolute reference that refers to the column. So a partial absolute reference for the column. And let's see how that works. That seems to work better. And these values seem sensible uh, for home goals for. Okay, I'm just going to, um, just outside of your screenshot, in fact, I'll bring it in. I'm just going to, uh, drag this formula across because the other formulae uh, are similar, if not the same, but that's going to accelerate the process. And then we can just tweak the formulae uh, to get them working. So home goals against, 
Uh, so there we'd want pretty much the same uh, formula. Okay, that reference has moved across. Okay, so this should still refer to column A, the first part. And then I'm just going to change the final part just outside of your screenshot. I think column E should do the job. Home goals for is column C, so home goals against is going to be column D. There we go, that should do the job. Good, so I'll just double click on that formula so you can see. So you can see the data range is the same because the team names are there. And then I, the only part I've changed is um, this part here, which is going to refer to the goals against column, not the goals for column. So that's a good example of just recycling a formula, making a tweak to it and getting it working. So that, that figure seems to be sensible. Arsenal conceding 11 goals uh, at home during the season. It seems to be sensible. Okay, so now we're looking at away goals for. So this is going to be slightly different because the away teams are in column B. So we're going to have to change that first reference. Uh, let's go back to the top of the sheet there. Back to the top. Back to the collation sheet. Yeah, and so this has got to be column B because the, the away teams are in column B. And then away goals for. So that's going to be the number of goals that the away team scored, which is in column D. So this final reference just outside of your screenshots, I'm going to change to column D. That seems to make sense. Uh, 30, Arsenal scoring 34 goals away from home. They did score more goals away than at home, which is a bit strange. So maybe we haven't quite got it quite right. But I'm going to keep working through it and test it all at the end, uh, see how it's all looking. Then away goals against, well again, we want to look at the away teams, and the away teams are in column B. And then away goals again, so that's going to be home goals scored, which I think are in column C. There we go, that seems to make sense. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so that's a good example, as I said, of how you can take, take one formula, copy-paste it across, and make the required, the required tweaks to it. That's much better than starting again uh, from scratch. So total goals for, well, that's going to be home goals for plus away goals for. That gives us 65. Drag that down. Total goals against, that's going to be um, home goals against plus away goals against. Okay, so we're saying Arsenal scored 65 goals, conceded 36. Let's look online at the Premier League table. And yeah, it's just outside of your screenshot. In fact, I'm going to manipulate this so you can see that better. There we go. Okay, more difficult than I thought. Okay, yeah, so it's saying... You can see on your screenshot there, Arsenal scored 65, conceded 36 goals there. Let's try Leicester, scored 68, conceded 36. So let's have a look at Leicester. Leicester on this row, row 10. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Leicester scored 68, conceded 36 goals. Okay, that seems to be working well. Uh, so that's a good example of how you can use some if to do this fairly sophisticated analysis where we're looking through a data set, picking out just the rows of data that conform to our criteria. Our criteria is the team name. So picking out those rows of data that we need and then just summing up those rows of data. That's exactly what we're doing uh, with the SUMIF formula. It does take a while to get to know the different components and we've used all three components there. But as you can see, it creates this beautiful, powerful, uh, collated, analysis. Okay, so in the next video, uh, I'll put the goal difference in quickly, just on my own. But in the next video, we're going to move towards converting this analysis, which is getting more and more complete and sophisticated, converting it into an actual lead table. To do that, uh, we're going to have to separate the teams in terms of the points they've scored and their goal difference. We're going to have to go through uh, a process to make sure that works properly. So the next video we're going to be preparing uh, for this lead table and maybe completing it as well. We'll see how we go. See you in the next video.